So I wanted to show you guys some of the stuff that I am taking with me to every single conference uh, seminar that I go to. So. Uh, obviously guys, you gotta have the bag. I take a nice little minimalist bag right there. We got an external hard drive, um, a book of course. Gotta read in the morning and before bed. We have our Mac, we got our little bunch of USB ports, HDMI, all that good stuff in there, charger. Uh, and also guys, if you're ever doing any kind of conferences or going, traveling, whatever, you absolutely need one of these battery pack um, for your phone, for your Mac, for whatever. We got a bunch of tripods, we got a bunch of chargers over there, we got some extra lighting, uh, the most bright light in the world right there. Because I know the lighting in the room is going to be absolute trash, and I want to shoot some content for you guys. Uh, we got our lavender pillow spray, absolutely love that stuff, and our blue blocker sunglasses. Made it to the hotel. Beautiful, beautiful Minnesota right there. Oh my goodness. Absolutely breathtaking. <laughs> Day one dream 100 is done. Uh, well, it's not even the, wasn't even the first day. It was just uh, registration day. Just got back to the hotel room, had a nice dinner with some amazing, absolutely amazing entrepreneurs. Uh, and that's what it's all about, guys. That's what it's all about, meeting new people, networking with other, other individuals that are absolutely crushing it in whatever niches that they are in. Uh, so if you aren't going to any conferences yet, or you have not planned to go to any conferences this year, you absolutely, absolutely need to, guys. You have to get out there, meet people, meet people that are gonna stretch the way you think, uh, and give you a new perspective. Like, I've, it's not even the first day yet, right? And I've gotten ideas from some of these entrepreneurs that I already wanna implement in my business right away, right? Like, things like, I was like, wow, I, I never, I, should, like, I would have never even thought of that. Like, that's amazing, and it's like, something that can impact your business like you never, you would have never been able to see because you're having somebody else look at it, right? Through their vision, right? Um, so I'm super excited about tomorrow. I am so, so, so exhausted. It's only 10 p.m. right now and I'm so, I'm so tired. So I'm gonna go pass out, wake up extra early tomorrow because day one starts. Day number two of Dream 100. Got the name badge. Super excited, his stay is going to, I can't even imagine the stuff that we're gonna be going over today. I'm super excited to be sharing it with you guys. Yo, what is up, Empire Builders? So, quick little uh, check-in right here. After day one of Dream 100 Con, it's after, uh, it's almost 1 a.m., guys, and, and I'm not even lying right now. Uh, so if you wanna see, cause you might not believe me, 12.50 a.m., there it is. So I wanna shoot this quick video on a day one update real quick on uh, what kind of I learned and kind of like some golden nuggets that I want uh, you guys to take away from. So the day started off with Dana speaking and I'm gonna give one point from every speaker that spoke uh, and then kind of just go off that. I think that's the best bet. So. Uh, after day one, uh, Dana spoke first, and one of the biggest things is after like the interview that we had with Dana on this channel, right? Break up those influencers, that Dream 100 list that you have, right? Into A, Bs, and Cs, right? The Bs and Cs are those people that you can get easy wins with, right? The A people, right? The A people you want to work really hard towards, and those are really the people you want to put a lot of effort towards because if they do promote your product, service, or whatever, they can literally explode your business overnight. Um, 
after uh after uh, Dana spoke, Trey Llewellyn, Trey Llewellyn came, uh, and he was honestly uh, my actually my favorite my favorite talk. Uh, no offense to the other speakers, of course, but he was my favorite talk. And the biggest takeaway I had from him was uh, when you talk to like people, right? When you like, for instance, when he interviews people on his Commerce Kings podcast, like he likes to ask like the top three things that that person uh, in certain categories. So, for example. Uh, Let's see, like for example, he likes to ask three questions so he gets like the maximum value from that person. All right, so for example, he'll ask like, hey, what is the one book that changed your life? That way he can just get that, that best book. He doesn't have to go waste time re reading like a ton of other books that are filled with fluff and nonsense and anything, right? He can interview a bunch of people and all ask them that same question. Hey, what is your favorite book? And he can always get that. Right, and read that, and so his library is now filled with absolutely all amazing books that are all recommended by amazing entrepreneurs. Right, and his next question is, uh, who's the number one mentor that made the biggest impact on your life? Right, and that way, when he gets that name, he can go research that person and see if they have any content out there that he can start consuming. Right, instead of wasting his time with like mentors that maybe uh, you know aren't worth anybody's time. Right, and the third question was what event have you gone to that has changed your life, right? That way you can maybe put it on his list to go to or research it, research it a little bit more. But he got, kinda goes in depth with that where he'll ask people, right, like, for example, he gave a great example when he went and visited Russell in Boise, Idaho, and he saw that uh, Russell had like absolutely tons and tons of books, right? And and Trey just asked him, he's like, hey, well, what are your top three favorite favorite books from that bookshelf, right? And it's funny, he's like, okay, and he, he named his top three favorite books, Russell to Trey. And then, like, he said the story where, like, the next day, Russell, like, messages Trey. And he's like, man, like, I read hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of books. And then you just came in and just got, like, my three favorite ones, right? So, like, kind of live your life in that way. Like, asking people, hey, like, what are those top three favorite? Um, next, Rachel Peterson talked about... Uh, mainly social media advertising kind of when you're how to kind of like hack uh, your dream 100 and kind of get to know them more personally instead of you know just sending the same gift to every single person that you have on your dream 100 and a lot of us that have our in our e-commerce businesses we usually don't even send gifts we usually we can just you know work with an influencer and they can promote our products but start thinking deeper start thinking about those people that have absolutely massive audiences that you can talk to, right? Those people, they're not gonna be able to, you're not just gonna be able to direct message them on Instagram and get a response, right? That it won't work, right? For those people, you're gonna have to send them packages, like really catching their attention and to get like good packages, right? Not like, like something that speaks to them. So how do you research those kind of things about that person, right? That makes you stand out than everybody else, right? So that was her, her, uh, her speech. Uh, then Steven Larson came up and he was talking about uh, primarily how he was able to get 31 out of his, uh, I think you know, 86 people on his Dream 100 list. And let me just read uh, real quick uh, some of his do nots. Well, I kind of made them do's, right? Do's for your Dream 100. He's like, have a specific offer just for them, right? Like, for example, guys, if you have somebody that's worth it, right? have a custom funnel for them, like co-brand it with your brand, make them feel special, right? Usually, if you're working with somebody, a smaller person, it might not necessarily be worth it to go through all that trouble, but if somebody has tens of thousands of followers or a huge email mailing list, that might be somebody that you wanna co-brand an actual funnel with, right? Where they get commissions off every time they buy your product. His next one was have specific stories that sell you, right? This one's really important, guys. Because think about it, people want to do business with people they know, like, and trust. They don't want to do business with people that they like, they're like, oh, they like skeeved out by or they don't like have any personal connection with. So really a lot of us, it's, it's about building that real relationship, a personal relationship with. And I actually led perfectly into um, uh, Bart Miller's talk, uh, which was the last talk. And it was really about getting to know those dream 100 people on a personal level. Not just like, hey, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? What's in it for me? Like, no, 
become like almost like friends, right? That's what you are, right? No, notice like big events that are happening in their lives and make it, make it make like a conscious effort to like reach out to them during those times, like really creating that relationship because, and, and don't expect ever anything from it, right? But you know, like when you have that kind of relationship with somebody, right? And you come to the level where you're like almost friends, right? You know, you can always call up that person when you're in like a, you know, a situation and they're there for you, right? That's where you really start connecting and you can really grow as quickly as you want, right? And that was about it. And then we had some Q and A uh, at the end of that day with the, uh, with all the panels. And then we had a fantastic, Absolutely fantastic dinner at Fogo de Chao, and then a few of us. If you don't know what Fogo de Chao is, absolutely fantastic Brazilian steakhouse where you basically just eat meat until you pass out, uh, which was fantastic. It was delicious. Uh, and then a few of us uh, went out and just had a great time. So now it's almost 1 a.m. in the morning, and I gotta be up early. So that is it for day one, guys. I look forward to uh, talking with you on day two. Yo, what is up, Empire Builders? So day two of Dream 100 Con is in the book, so I really wanna quickly go over some keynotes that I learned from this event real quick because it's it's pretty late and I'm already tired as hell. Uh, so the day started off with Russell Brunson coming up on the stage uh, and he talked about uh, some stuff that's gonna be in his new book called Traffic Secrets. So uh, some of the things he started talking about was you know, traffic you control, traffic you earn, and traffic that you own, right? So this is similar to what he talks about in his uh, dot com secrets, right? Uh, where traffic you control is like Facebook ads, Google ads, like wherever you put money in and you get the traffic, right? Traffic you earn though, traffic that you earn is traffic that you have to, uh, you know, have a relationship with somebody with to get. Now there are two ways that you can achieve that because some of you are gonna be like, well, what if I just pay the influencer, right? There's two ways, right? And let me just read this real quick. Uh, and I've got a bunch of notes here from his speech oh my goodness uh, he talked for like I feel like three hours and just dropping so much gold but I want to uh, really read this real quick uh, ja -ja -ja. he said uh, come on all right he said if you have more time if you have more time then focus on working your way in with that influencer right and by influencer I'm not talking about somebody that has like a hundred thousand five I'm talking about big a-list people that if they were seen using your product that though you the literally your business would be set overnight. Like think like big, okay? Like millions of followers on let's say YouTube for example or Instagram where if they were seen using your product or started promoting your product and really you guys had like a good business relationship with each other, it would set you on the map right away. So uh, Russell said there's two ways to do it, right? If you have more time, then focus on working your way in, right? Building a real long lasting relationship with them. Um, but if you have more money, right then buy your right way in with them buy your way in right that buying all their products right from them um or you know paying for the promotional uh promotions from them right if they have a blog buy ad spots in them anything you have to do to get in front of their audience right um he talked so many like high level i mean guys oh my god his his talk was so good i'm actually gonna like just make some separate videos about it but like I'm just gonna leave leave that out because I there's I really want to talk about all these things but then like I will be on here for uh, like another hour uh, so expect some awesome content uh, coming up because he went over some amazing things and I definitely want to uh, uh, share it with you guys uh, so stay tuned for that uh, ja -ja 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 -ja. so uh, then Dave Lindenbaum came on uh, stage and just dropped so much absolute value. I'm actually planning to have him on the channel soon. He's absolutely uh, an amazing individual, uh, so, like literally probably the kindest person you will ever meet in your life, right? So some of you guys might know who Dave Lindenbaum is, or you don't, but check him out. He's he's absolutely 
the most kind individual I've probably ever met and he is like the happiest individual I've ever met um, which is definitely something I'm envious of like just being in that state all the time he seems to be in so uh, you guys probably already know that who those of you that might follow him but let me go over some of the notes because uh, he gave uh, let me see uh, da, da, da. So, oh, here was a really good one that he let, he, he said, um, and I will share one of them, all right, one of them right now. Uh, he said, if your influencer has a movement, right, like that they built, right, so think about, let's just say, for example, you want Logan Paul to promote your products for you, right? And he has like, I forget what he calls his people, right? But he identifies those people as something, right? Is it like Mavericks or something like that? I have no idea, whatever it is. I know he has something that he calls his audience. Well, go in there as that and be unique, right? Promote promote that fact that you're also, you know, part of his movement, but don't just be like everybody else. So for one example that Dave did um, was he I forget who the example was but there was some some contest that somebody on his dream 100 was doing and instead of submitting like just a standard you know application or you know just a video like everybody else was doing he went and wrote like a custom song for this person and performed it right just really catching the attention of that person as well as promoting the actual movement that that person was doing right so if you were going to do something like this for Logan Paul right show that you're like a maverick or whatever it's called and do like a music video for them or something like that right where you're promoting the brand at the same time and getting on their radar and the key with this guys is always don't expect anything in return all right you're this is about building relationships long-lasting relationships with these influencers all right uh, then Dana Derricks talked a little bit ag uh, again. It was only a few minutes. So it doesn't look like I have much notes on that one uh, that he talked. And then Myron Gold, uh, uh, Myron Goldman came on stage, and this was one of my favorite speeches next to Trey's. Uh, and actually, uh, there were so many good ones. So I don't even know which one was my favorite uh, at this point. But this one was so good, guys. Uh, and I'm gonna actually do a whole video on this one because. Uh, he started talking about economic eras, right? And how, uh, let's say from like the 1750s to the 1950s, right? Machines, right? Manufacturing, those were the people uh, that held all the wealth, right? And then people from the 1950s to 1978 was our distribution age. This is where outlets, people that had outlets uh, equaled wealth. Think like Sam Walton, right? With Walmart, right? He built massive amounts of wealth, right? During that time. And then you might be thinking, well, what, 1978? Well, like 1978 to 1994, right? Right? Personal computers uh, were invented in 1978, and that then we entered that technical knowledge, where people with technical knowledge, right, were wealthy, right? This is where Apple, um, Microsoft, Bill Gates, all of those companies started getting founded around. And then from 1994 to 2003, 2003, 2003, uh, internet was invented and the information age began. All right, and people who controlled the information made the wealth, right? Like Google, right? You could click a button, search, and and you know find whatever information you need. Yahoo, right? And what he really was stressing about this, and I don't want to go too much into it, but it was absolutely like an eye-opening presentation about wealth. Um, just, I'm gonna, oh God, it was so good. It was so good. I don't even wanna, I, I'm just doing a disservice, like, <laughs> talking about it. Um, but he said, always create wealth in the age that you are in, right? Create wealth in the age that you are in, because if you're always late to it, you might get a little bit of money, right? You might make a little bit of money. But you want to be like that first person that goes in. Like for example, like I said, like he said, like that's why Google and Yahoo were able to succeed as quickly as they can because they were the first that control that information during that information age that they were in. Um, so let's see. He had so many good quotes. I mean, he had so many good quotes during this, guys. Uh, 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 believing you, you will be living what you are believing. Um, anything you tell yourself about a future event, you made it up. Right, uh, he's like procrastination is a symptom of a problem, and that problem is anxiety. You really have anxiety, not fear. Anxiety is a caution over a future imagined danger. That was amazing. Anxiety is a caution over a future imagined danger. Right, it doesn't actually exist. Right, right, and this is like some of the things he says. Right? He said never ask this. He said never ask this. Right, what if it doesn't work? 
instead of saying, what if it doesn't work? And this is what I see a lot of people struggle with, right? In this space, especially when you're trying to start a new business, a new e-commerce business is you're always so skeptical and you're in your mind and you're thinking like worst case scenarios right away. Like, oh, well, what if it doesn't work? What if it doesn't work? Well, instead, right, ask yourself, how great is my life going to be if it does work? Right? How great will my life be if it does work? Think about your state of mind when you're building that business. When it, like, instead of thinking like, oh, this is this might not work. I don't know if this is for me. But instead, you're waking up every single day, saying, you know, my life is going to be so great when this finally works out. Right? Who do you think is going to be successful in the long run? It, depending on who uh, who you ask, like the person that's playing the victim or the per person that wakes up every morning knowing that they're going to succeed at it. Uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm just going to read a few more quotes because this was our. Um, Wow, nine minutes I'm talking on here, guys? Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, so let's see, he's like, most people are broke because everything we've been taught about money is wrong. That's absolutely so true. Uh, I'm out of my story. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, yeah, like, so for example, first mover advantage right was one thing he talked about right mcdonald's right doesn't make the best burgers right everybody knows we can all make our better burger than mcdonald's right in our own houses right but they were the first to market they were first to create that system of selling them and that's why still to this day mcdonald's sells the most burgers compared to anybody right and you don't want to be late to the party right um wealth measures tie oh this was so good this was so Right, this was so good. And my math might be completely wrong on here. But he said, wealth measures time, not money. Right, wealth measures time, not money. Um, like think about it. somebody can be making a million dollars a year, but then let's say somebody that only makes 20,000 a year, it might take them, I don't know the math, it might take them 40 years to reach a million, right? Ah, oh, man, it's, it's just so much gold he dropped here. Uh, and it's just fine, like he said, like after that, he's like, time is the only difference right there with that million, right? Time, right? The one person did it in 40 years, another person did it in one year. Um, and you must act in a sense of urgency, right? You must act in a, good, in a sense of urgency, it's so true. Um, and yeah, that was, he was our last speaker for that day. I think we did some Q&A afterwards um, with him as well, but oh my goodness, such a crazy event. And I'm super excited about tomorrow's event. And I'll be taking you guys on board because we're going for the extra uh, Mastermind Day event, guys. But uh, I'm still not sure how I'm gonna mash these up together, but uh, that is it for day two of Dream 100 Con. Final day of Dream 100 Con for the private mastermind event. Uh, I'm super excited, super exhausted already, but I'm super excited uh, for this day. I'm sure there's gonna be a ton, an absolute ton of value drop. Yo, what is up, Empire Builders? Uh, so Dream 100 Con is over. You can see I got some cool swag, Dream 100 Con. Uh, day three, Private Mastermind uh, ended. Uh, absolutely a fantastic day. Uh, super small group uh, that came out and came to the event. I think we had probably around 30, I'd say 30 people go. Uh, fantastic, uh, and it's so nice being in like a small mastermind group because people can be so much more vulnerable with each other. And I don't want to really talk about, I, I really don't feel like I should even talk about like a lot of the stories that were shared uh, at the mastermind event. And I don't think it's my place, but if you ever guys have the opportunity to go to a private, very small, tight knit mastermind group, especially with high level entrepreneurs that are selling millions and millions and millions of dollars in their businesses, I highly, highly suggest you jump on that opportunity uh, just like I did and I would recommend it to absolutely anyone. But uh, I head home tomorrow and I'm uh, kind of upset. I'm so sad that it's over uh, and I can't wait till the next event. Uh, hopefully, uh, definitely gonna be going to Funnel Hacking Live, thinking about a couple other events coming up here in the next couple months, but uh, we will see. But I was super excited to take you guys on this journey, guys. Uh, I'm still going to uh, probably shoot a couple more footage on the way out tomorrow, but uh, I know I shot some videos uh, 
throughout this entire journey about Dream 100 Con, and it was super exciting. I'll definitely, absolutely, definitely be here uh, next year. Uh, some of the connections I've made here, uh, I, I can call friends now, um, and I hope you guys uh, have the opportunity to, uh, to attend to it, attend it again next year because. The thing that really separated this event from every other event that I've ever been to is that it was such a small group uh, and that really set it apart like nothing else. I can't even explain. Being in such a small group, um, uh, having a Rus Russell Brunson speak for like two and a half hours, just packing value after value, um, just it was absolutely amazing or being just around uh, such, uh, such amazing entrepreneurs. and. Everybody, everybody was so giving. It, it was like incredible. Like you walk up to anybody, anybody, and just start talking to them. And you know, it's one. It's like that long lost friend that you never even talked to, you haven't talked to in so long. They're just wanting to give and just help each other out in your businesses. And, and that's the way it should be, guys. And that's the way you should not just treat your friends and, and family and whoever, but you should treat your customers like that too, right? Or and especially potential business partners, right? Treat them like friends. Care about them, not just hey, what's in it for me? Like so many of us do all right but uh super super pumped to have uh taken you guys on this journey uh and i hope you guys enjoyed all this stuff i will be shooting uh some awesome other con more content about dream 100 con some of the amazing stuff i learned uh so stay tuned on the channel make sure you're subscribed and make sure you guys are checking out all those resources down below and also in the first comment guys but that is it for dream 100 con guys i hope you enjoyed this and remember your empire starts now